In early 2022, I spent a month in Medellin, Colombia. I wanted to experience life in the city that I'd heard so much about. ¿Te gusta la vida en Medellín? Sí. Sí. Muy bacana, excelente, hermano. I had a lot of good moments and also some bad moments. Just had a sketchy encounter with my camera. I'm going to get out of here and then I'll tell you guys what happened. We're going to talk about both in this video. But mostly, I'm going to share this fascinating city full of people with so much heart, you can't help but fall in love with this place. So get ready my friends, this is a long one, but it's going to be worth the ride. This is Medellin, Colombia, a city like no other. By the way, a quick note on pronunciation. At some points in this video I say Medellin, in some points I say Medellin. Medellin is the typical Spanish way of saying it, Medellin is what locals to the city say. Either way is correct, just don't say Medellin. Medellin is always wrong. Okay, back to the show. In today's video, I wanna show you three different days that I was filming, three different experiences, if you will, three different sides of Medellin, because it's a complex city. There's not only one side to it. It's, in some ways, it has 100 different faces. And today, I'm gonna to show you three of those. And by the end of the video, you're gonna know a little bit more about what life is like in this complicated, but beautiful city. I'm gonna start in an area called El Poblado. This is like Medellin level one. This is where most hostels are, most international restaurants are, most tourists to Medellin know this area. And it's beautiful, but it can be a bit of a bubble. And so in part two of this video, we're gonna break out of the bubble and I'm gonna show you a more local area called Baylin. Baylin is the area I was staying in and it's next to a beautiful and popular area called Lorelli's. So in part two, I'm gonna show you those two neighborhoods. And then we're gonna end with part three where I visit a neighborhood called Comuna Trece. I, I don't wanna spoil the story for Comuna Trece, but I'll just say it used to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. And this neighborhood has completely transformed. It's a testament to the city of Medellin, what they've done with this place. It's, it's an incredible story. But yeah, let's step back. Let's go to El Poblado and let's show you what the average tourist experience in the city might be like. Uh, gotta love that Colombian coffee. So my friends, it's a new day. The sun is shining, it's a beautiful day. And today we're gonna to be exploring El Poblado. Uh, of course, this is an area that a lot of foreign tourists spend their time in. There's a lot of international restaurants. And I've only been there once, it was at nighttime and it was crazy. The streets were just packed with people. I don't know what it'll be like during the day, but we're gonna explore it together. We're gonna to have some fun. So as soon as I'm done my coffee, I'm gonna call the Uber and we're gonna hit the road. Okay, friends, we made it, El Poblado. This behind me is Parque Geras, and this is the place that, uh, as I understand it, at nighttime, it's just like a place where sometimes there's live music, people are hanging out, they're drinking, they're, you know, uh, doing what people do at night. But during the day, it's just a chill little park. Let's go take a walk, see what we can see. I mean, first impressions, you can, you can hear music coming out of the restaurants, you can see colors. It's a very colorful neighborhood for sure. I love hearing music on the streets, but the problem is <clears throat> if I play too much of it, YouTube will copyright strike my video and I get in trouble. You know, copyrights, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, this is what it's like here in the park. Uh, it's a Monday today, Monday afternoon. Looks like some people are cleaning. Maybe a bit of renovations going on. But yeah, it's a nice place. 
Very clean, lots of garbages. Colorful, obviously. Wow, and check this street out with the palm trees and the painted, uh, painted pavement. That's pretty cool. Man, that guy's seriously so good. I, I gotta give him something uh, for his performance. It's muy bueno, huh? ¿Cómo te llamas? Andrés. Andrés? ¿Tú vas aquí todos los días? No todos los días, pero mañana sí venimos. Mañana? Qué bueno. Buen día, Gracias, bendiciones. Hasta luego. I mean, is it fair to say this neighborhood's not as distinctly Colombian? I don't want to generalize too much because I don't know exactly what a Colombian neighborhood looks like, but to me, this looks not too different than some other uh, <laughs> North American party strips that you might see in Las Vegas or any any party city anywhere. You know, we got the we got the ads for Heineken on the outside. We don't have the Club Colombiano, which is the Colombian beer. Some nice looking spots around here. So that's it, that's El Poblado. It's an area that makes your visit to Medellin easier than other areas. It's an area where you have a lot of international food, you have a lot of people who speak English, you have a lot of things that are geared towards partying and tourism. Once you step outside of that bubble, you're gonna have a different experience. And that has pros and cons. You know, the pros are you're going to have a more authentic experience. The prices are probably going to be cheaper. The people who meet you are going to be excited because maybe they haven't seen a foreigner or talked to a foreigner for a very long time. Ciao, adios. Mucho gusto. Jeremy. Sandra. Yeah, okay. Sandra, your YouTube channel. So they can... They're going to have favorites. On the other hand, uh, there, you're going to be more of a target. You're going to get more attention. Some of the women I talked to said they got catcalled a lot when they're going to the grocery store, stuff like that. Unfortunately, it is a reality in Colombia. And, you know, if you're someone like me who's filming with an expensive camera, you need to be very cautious. I, I would take some footage and then I'd put it away in my backpack and I'd walk. You know, I was always trying to be aware of my surroundings. And so the horribly lit clip that I'm about to show you, this was me literally in my room trying to get the courage to go out and film. I've been in Medellin, Colombia for over a week now, and I have not filmed with my camera once because this is a city that I don't particularly feel safe bringing a camera onto the streets. The place I'm staying, I know two people who have had their phones robbed in the last week. Uh, one of them, this Irish guy, he was robbed two blocks from where I live at gunpoint in broad daylight. The other guy, an American, he's been living here for like 11 months. And I asked him what he thinks of the idea of me filming with my camera on the street. Will I get robbed? Will something bad happen? And basically, <laughs> it was funny. Like, he really thought about it. He stopped and thought. He said, you know, if you film on the street in a safer neighborhood, I'd say there's about a three to five percent chance you get robbed. Three to five percent. Like if you're in like North America or you know Canada, the United States, people are still stealing things from you. It's just they do it in a more professional way, like subscription services, like subscription services, like things. or like hospital fees, or dental fees, or just like other ways. Here they just yeah they just straight up take it. They just take it from you. And I thought about it and I thought you know what I like those odds. I'm gonna take a chance. I want to show you this beautiful city. I want to show you the kind of experiences, the kind of neighborhoods I've been exploring. You know, it's unfortunate that it's not so secure, but... <sighs> but I had to get over it. I mean, that's what travel is. It's about pushing past your comfort zone. And you never want to push too far and get in trouble, but you never want to live in fear either. And I, I wasn't going to live in fear of this neighborhood. I was, I was going to film this video. Hopefully, this video goes well. We're about to find out. Let's go. Now 
unfortunately, as you can see, it's raining a bit. Uh, I suppose I could have waited for a nice sunny day to make this video. But this is just reality of traveling in Colombia. You know, a lot of this country is rainforest. You do get a lot of precipitation almost everywhere you go. So we're going to get some uh, gloomy vibes today, but we're, we're still going to have fun. I thought I would just start by showing you a nice residential street, not far from where I'm staying in Medellin. I'm staying in a more local neighborhood, which is more to the north of the city and not too far from an area called Lorelli's, which I'm going to show you too. Uh, it's another area that has like a lot of nice restaurants, very walkable, and very pretty too. It, it almost reminds me of somewhere like Condesa in Mexico City, you know, you got a lot of trees, a lot of uh, interesting architecture. And so I'm going to take you on a little walk through Lorelli's. But first, there's something I want to show you across the street. Come on. Now it's not too busy today due to the rain, but on an average sunny day, this place is popping with people. Now here's what I want to show you. This is an outdoor gym area, which is free to use. This is completely open to the public. And just, just take a look at this. Now first you see like the pull-up bars and stuff like that. Should I do a pull up for the camera? Ugh! No, I'm not gonna embarrass myself. But you know, like things like that, sometimes we have those in parks in Canada, like that's nothing new. But take a look at this. Have you ever seen this in your life? A free park with just plates and plates. Five kilos, 10 kilos. They got bench presses, shoulder presses. They even have free weights. The type that you could just walk away with. <laughs> now, admittedly, they're not as nice as the ones uh, you might see in an in a indoor gym. I mean, they're made out of concrete. But that, to me, is fascinating. That you got a gym of that quality that is free to use. And it also speaks to something that I've been playing over in my mind. You know, it's like this area and this city simultaneously has a security issue where people can get robbed. But at the same time, you have free weights that, like, like, what would stop someone from just taking those home, you know? But people don't. It's for the community. It's like something that belongs to an individual, like a phone or a camera, you might get stolen. But something that belongs to the whole neighborhood, no one's gonna steal. Maybe there's like a level of respect to things that belong to the neighborhood. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but to me, there's a fascinating, it's a fascinating thing to think about. Anyway, the people working out are probably wondering why I'm filming them. So I'm going to walk away and I'm going to show you some more residential areas here in Medellin. Vamos! I love seeing those guys just rolling around with their fruit. You know, you don't always have to go to the uh, supermarket. Sometimes it comes to you. I also love how green this city is. I mean, you know, people love to complain about the rain. In my country, Canada, Vancouver is a super rainy city. But just like here in Medellin, it means you have all different types of trees and plants that are growing here. I mean, just look at the street and look how it's like almost surrounded by jungle. It's, it's really cool. Okay, man, this is wild. We're gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna grab a taxi or something. Let's go. Okay, my driver's almost here, so uh, I need to practice my chit chat. I'm gonna, when I get in, I'm gonna say lots of rain. Mucha lluvia. Mucha lluvia. Mucha lluvia. Mucha lluvia. Buenas tardes. Mucha lluvia. It's too bad, you know, I heard this place has a really good menu of the day, but it's only from 12 until 3, and now it's 3.30 and they said there's nothing they can do. So I just told her in my broken Spanish, uh, I'm going to go to another restaurant, I'm going to try and get a menu of the day, 
And then I'm gonna go back there afterwards and get a coffee or something because that place looks really cool. But for food options, I only saw like sandwiches and burgers and I really want to... Jesus. I really want to show you one of those like traditional style uh, lunch menus from Colombia. So we're gonna see what we can find. Maybe this place? Eh, tengo eh, robalo a la plancha, que es un pescado, un filete sin espinas. Ah, qué rico. Viene con arroz con coco, trae ensalada y patacón. Perfecto. Ese. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. 14,000. I get a starter, I get a main dish, uh, I get a drink. You know, can't complain. I even got some fish to uh, stare at me and judge me as I eat my fish, which is my main course today. That, that could be awkward, but uh, yeah. Got a nice drink. And we have a consomme, which is like a... I don't know exactly how to describe consomme, but it's usually like a simple broth-based soup. You know, I actually haven't seen lime on the table at any restaurants yet in Colombia. Uh, but of course, this is a Pacific style restaurant. Just goes to show, like, this is a very diverse country. Not just in the people who live here, but the foods and also, like, just the ways of living. Oh, that's delicious. There's some fish in this consomme as well. Oh, muchas gracias. Que rico. Anyway, I'm going to move on to this lunch. Look at this. Oh. So this is actually harder. This is probably the plantain, like a plantain cake. This fish, oh, you don't need a knife for that. It just, it just melts on your fork. We got kind of like a coleslaw salad action. Brown rice. Looks like a good meal to me. And look at this, we step back outside again and the rain has almost stopped. That is how we do it, my friends. Get some food, fill up that belly, wait for the rain to end. That's what travel's all about. I'm actually thinking it's kind of cool walking around here on a gloomy day. You get, it just makes all the green like pop out that much more, you know? And finally, like literally, as I was finishing my video, I'd already said everything I wanted to say. I was just getting a last few shots. Something happened. Just had a sketchy encounter with my camera. I'm gonna get out of here, then I'll tell you guys what happened. Hello. It's strange, isn't it? Cause like this was the day I'd been thinking about robbery more than any other day I'd filmed probably anywhere. I was very cautious cause of the stories I'd heard in Medellin and then finally something happened. Man, that got my adrenaline, that got my adrenaline running what happened back there. I'm just gonna tell you really quick uh, while I, I sit in this, this cafe. I wasn't even hungry. I just bought something here so I could have an excuse to sit down inside. But yeah, what happened was, okay, just after I told you I was almost done my video, I was just gonna film a little bit more. Uh, I was filming some street scenes and stuff like that with my camera, of course. And there's, I don't know if I've shown it in a video, but it's quite common for people to be like holding little bags of candies and like offering them to you. Um, I think these are people who are lower income trying to make money, obviously. It's like, sometimes people just give them money. They don't even accept the candy. It's just like a way of asking for money, basically. Uh, and this guy was like, I passed him on the sidewalk and he was holding out his hand, he was asking for money. Uh, he obviously saw my camera. And then, and then I was filming a little bit more and then a moment later this other guy, he asked me what time it is. I didn't actually know what time it was. I didn't want to pull out my phone because that other guy was right behind me still. Um, but then I pulled out my phone really quickly and I, I checked it, it was like 4.45. Uh, and I told him, Quattro e Carante Cinco. And then the other guy was like still watching me and he was like walking after me. So I just like quickly walked out of there because I'm like, shit, now I've shown my phone, I, I'm holding my camera, like, um, 
I'm like, I don't know, like too much was happening. I just decided I wanted to be out of that situation. And then, so I was filming a bit more. And then the guy was like, he was following me across the street. He was like right behind me. The guy with the bag of candies. So then I just like loudly went like, hey, no. Like I just like kind of like barked a bit, like just to be like, no, man, like stop. Like I, I know what you're doing, stop. And maybe I overreacted, but I just needed him to be very clear like, dude, you're not following me. And I, I said it loud enough that a couple other people around could hear me and see that I'm a guy who was not in a good situation with this other guy. And then he was uh, obviously like, he was like visibly upset. He was like, just he was just like glaring at me and watching me as I walked away. And then I saw a taxi and I like ran to the taxi and I just jumped in the taxi and I, uh, <laughs> I, was, gonna, I was gonna leave. But then after driving for a block, I told the taxi where to go and he's like, wait, like he, he had already, he was waiting for someone else. So I had to get out of that taxi and then, uh, I don't know, man. I just walked to this little shop because uh, I don't want my friend over there following me anymore. I, I, maybe I overreacted, but it got like, the, the feeling changed very, very quickly. But anyway, you know, so far so good. We uh, <laughs> got to explore a neighborhood, got to have some good food, found a cool coffee shop. And finally, we got this. Uh, so what I bought here, okay, this is, so I bought some uh, Colombian treats, cocadas, just these little coconut treats. They actually, they actually look really good. I can't wait to try these. Um, but then I saw another type of treat called panelitas negritas. And um, as you can see, they're like similar to the coconut treat, but they put like brown caramel all over it. And, uh, <laughs> There's now a brown-skinned woman on the on the uh, on the cover, instead of the light-skinned woman who we had before. So, I just <laughs> I just found that interesting because that's the type of thing that you would definitely not see uh, in Canada or the United States. This company would be in a lot of trouble, I think, for matching the skin color of the candies to the skin color of the woman on the packaging. Um, but then again, like, is it actually offensive? Is there actually anything offensive about that? Or is it just a light-hearted attempt to, you know, to market their product? I, I don't know. But it shows you that different countries have different sensitivities about stuff like that. And yeah, I thought it was interesting. I thought it looked good, so I bought them. Um, oh, hey, look, my Uber's here. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be racially insensitive by showing this or whatever. I just, I just find it very, very fascinating because the thing is, uh, Colombia is not like... Like places like Canada and the United States, I feel like we've become hypersensitive about topics regarding to race. And something like this would be seen as inappropriate. And that company would like, they'd be canceled. They'd be like, yo, you can't, you can't do this. It's 2022. Whereas in Colombia, it's just, I feel like they have a sense of humor about everything. And I feel like Latinos and Latinas in general have this, uh, like if someone is fat, they just call them fatty as like a nickname, but it's, it's said with love. And, and so like, they just, it's hard to explain, but I, if any Latinos are watching, let me know if you agree. I just feel like poking fun at the differences between color or size or anything like that is more socially acceptable. So anyway, that's why I uh, wanted to show you these treats. So we've seen the two sides of Colombia so far. We've seen El Poblado, which in my opinion was a bit of a bubble. It's not the most exciting neighborhood ever because it didn't feel the most authentic ever. Then I went to a more, you know, quote unquote authentic neighborhood. And what happened? Well, I had a crazy rainy day. I, 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 you know, the restaurant was closed at a weird time and then I almost got robbed and then I got these candies and like, the thing about real places when you step out of the bubble is things become harder. Things are not geared so much toward tourists. It's like, okay, you want the real world? It's like the difference between the swimming pool and the ocean. Okay, the swimming pool does not as much to see, but the ocean, like you could get swept away. So you better, you better be careful out there. But are either one of those really Medellin? Like which one is more Medellin than the other? I don't know. They're just two different faces of the city. And in part three of this video, I wanna show you a third face. A face that perhaps is more indicative of what Medellin is really all about. And I hope you'll stick around to the end because this part was, this was a crazy place. Welcome to my neighborhood, nice to meet you. Mira que lo hacemos en este momento. Claro que es así, hermano, con todo el talento. Por eso lo hago.
pago y se lo merece. Que ustedes que estén aquí es algo que se le agradece. Claro que... Hello YouTube, today we are going to Camina 13. In English that would be Community 13. It's a very famous part of Medellin that a lot of people visit. It's got an interesting history that we're going to learn about today. Uh, but first we got to get through the traffic. Medellin traffic, crazy as always. Also here with me today is a new friend named Yolanda. Hola! How are you doing hey. Yolanda? I'm really good. I'm excited to see this part of Medellin. <laughs> and where are you from? I'm from Austria. Austria, yeah. yeah. Not Australia. Not Australia, Austria. As, as, as people sometimes say. Yeah, we have cows and no kangaroos. Yeah. Cows and no kangaroos. Yeah. Good way to remember. Austria, Austria. 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 Europa. Europa, sí. No yeah. tenemos kangaroos. No hay kangaroos. No. ¿Te gusta el video en Medellín? Sí. Sí. Muy bacana, excelente, hermano. Por acá muy bacano. El clima, el ambiente, todo. Lo que últimamente está viendo es mucho, mucho, mucho tráfico. Mucha mucho conversión. tráfico. Sí. Lo que pasa es que están haciendo muchas obras. Bueno, Muy bueno. El ambiente, el ambiente <risa> bueno, el clima bueno. Buena gente también. Buena gente, sí. sí. Buena. sí. What a legend that Uber driver was. Really nice guy. We just got off at this metro for San Javier. San Javier. Uh, this is like one of the entry points to Camino Treze. But really it's a huge area, you know. It's not like there's one spot that is Camino Treze. It's the name of the neighborhood. So it's up to you where you choose to begin. But uh, this is a place where you can sometimes find guides. Yolanda's already talking to someone. Hola, ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? ¿Qué le comentaba? Sí. Nosotros somos guías locales de aquí de la comuna. Muy bien. ¿Hablo inglés? No. Ah, vea. Yeah. Hola, guys, ¿cómo estás? ¿Estás bien? Ah, muy bien. ¿De dónde estás? Canadá. 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 Austria. Austria. Oh, that's great. So, guys, actually, uh, my name is Johan. Let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm still uh, I'm a tour guide. Johan? Johan. Johan. Ajá. ¿Cómo estás? Uh, uh, 29. Uh, oh, yeah. We're looking for a guy who speaks English. We found one who speaks English and German. Uh, officially, I speak two languages Italian, English, and Spanish. You speak Italian, but you speak Italian? No. No, I speak Italian. I only know Italian. I got you, got you, man. I got you, man. Use it wherever. Whatever you need from me, just let me know, guys. ¿Qué tal? Hey. Take the bus. Okay. The bus ride just costs 2,050. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, actually, like a community 13 is like a district that before, back in the days, back in 2002, well, we were one of the most dangerous places in the world. But actually, by that time also, then the social transformation of the community would start right here. Oh, my God, this is a good place. I'm going to do it. What is this? It's a Benedictus. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Is it a school or a community? Yes. Yes. You can see a photo of us. What do you mean? A photo. A photo. A photo. Ciao. Adios. Thank you very much. Jeremy. Alessandra. Hello. Hello. Okay. Your YouTube channel, <laughs> so they can. They're getting famous. We're making friends already. So just to give a bit of context on what I know about this area, this was the heart of the drug war and the gang activity that plagued Medellin for so many decades. And in 2002, there was a major military operation. Paramilitaries came in, there were shootouts in the streets, a lot of people died actually. Black Hawks actually were shooting from this area, flying around all these areas, circling around for more than one day actually. Military tanks were actually attempting to ascend from the bottom part of the hill. So these are the houses that used to, back in the days, have to take out the mattress and put it against the wall. Actually, when the war happened right here, we had no ambulances, no doctors, no nurses here. So that's why the people, when one person got shot, they had to take him out, take out a sheet, 
and within your shit, take it to the hospital. Or they went to the hospital, most of them die. So actually this year we're gonna turn 20 years of the operation, 20 years, 16th of October. It's a big memorial day for all of the community right here. Yeah, it's an interesting emotional experience being here. Uh, because everything here, like people are in good spirits. You can see like the tienda on the corner selling ice cream. I'm walking around with my camera with no problems. You guys know in some of my other videos, some other days I've had a lot of concern about safety. This area is very sa about as safe as it could get in Medellin. But just beyond that safety, there's the memories of the past. That behind those, uh, those slums of Camino Treze are, that's, that's, that's a mass grave where thousands of people were buried. It's actually the largest mass grave here in Latin America. That's a grave yeah, behind graveyard. those houses. Mass grave. In 2002, remember, they had more than 2,000 civilians die. So all of them are buried beneath that mass grave over there. Oh my God. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Ah, bien, gracias a Dios. Bien contento porque está en el Inde. ¿Tú to, to vives aquí? Camino no. Chese, no. Yo vivo en el corazón. Sino que yo vengo aquí a estudiar a Villa Laura. Yo por eso vendo desde esto. Chocolatina. Chocolatina. ¿Cuánto cuesta un portrait como este? Tú, 200. Okay. Well, thank you. Gracias, Diego. A la orden, bye bye. Bye bye. Ah, thank you, sir. Hey, I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, jo Joe, can I ask you a yeah. question? This yeah, is sure. maybe a difficult question, but tell me. obviously Colombia has a big difference in racial people, right? You have Colombians who are very light-skinned, Colombians who are very dark-skinned. Do, uh, do you think there is racism in Colombia? Do, well, do people have diff issues like that? I mean, obviously, well, lots I, I of countries try... struggle with this. What's it like in Colombia? Well, actually, here we're going to struggle with racism because actually we just want to keep in mind that we come from, from, from the Africa. I'm gonna tell you some of the history. When the Spaniards come here to colonize a the country, they brought Africans as slaves from, um, from, from Africa. And uh, we as Colombia, we feel that the black people are part of our blood, are part of our skin color. So that's why we don't have any distinction on, on, on skins actually here. So I would say zero percent. So we don't struggle. And uh, that's actually like a mentality of all Colombians. As you've seen guys and as you have explored my country, You've seen that most of the people are so cool, so vibe, and that's actually part of the principle that our families just instill us when we are uh, like yeah. kids and all that, just to treat the other one not like a like a visitor, like a stranger, yeah. but treat like a brother, like a friend. Yeah. That's actually part of our culture, and I would yeah. say this is more impacted here. That's beautiful, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like beautiful people always like want to get to know you more about other cultures, uh -huh. and it's I love it. If you see, Camino 13 is, is a poor neighborhood, but you go to a poor neighborhoods and you see people smiling. They always smile. So that's actually part of our culture and it's something that we have to be so proud of. Because actually guys, remember, I live in the United States and the atmosphere there is way different. People just see them making money, they're gonna be rich, they're gonna be happy, but that's not, that's not the perception we have about happiness here. When I, when I was there, these people concentrate on work all the time. How about your family? How about yourself? How about going to jail work out a bit? Life is just one, so you have to leave it the best as possible. It's not about making money the whole day. And that's actually what I learned from the other You're two. You're a smart guy, Jeff. You're a smart guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah thank yeah. you. Man. You know, it's really inspiring what they've done here. I think about other cities I've been to. Mexico City, uh, Guatemala City, San Jose in Costa Rica. You know, these... These are beautiful big cities, but you don't really go to any of the slums or any of the poor neighborhoods because it's not safe. But of course, you see them sometimes. You're like, you know, when you land on the airplane, you see these neighborhoods that are so visually interesting that you wish you could go. Well, what Medellin has done here has they've taken one of these areas and they've they've first of all created job opportunities for the people who are living here, but also they've they've made it accessible to tourists. They've opened up a whole new doorway, a whole new, a whole new opportunity for people to visit 
and see a side of the country they usually never get to see. I mean, it must, it must be crazy for the older people who are living here especially, just to remember what it used to be and what it is today. Like, what a, what a change to your neighborhood, you know? Try to imagine. I was a kid, and I, part of the history that I have is that even if I want an uncle living in another part of my city, he was not allowed to get into here. What I, what I had to do is I, I had to ask permission for a guerrilla commander. Even if we want to go play soccer, to just say, you just got two hours for playing. Wow. If you pass the hour, we could get killed. And that's why we rushed to, to, I mean, we wanted to play mobile, we couldn't because of the war that we were here. And the guerrilla just established checkpoints every one kilometer. So if they see you like a stranger, they disappear you. So that actually was a very rapid change. If you see that, it was just in 2002. So in almost 10 years, Camino 13 could overcome the war in a real good way. And that's a beautiful thing about the history. Instead of be up, be up in arms, we decided to be up in brushes, be up in arms in schools, be up in arms in art. And that's why we also have art schools. In those art schools since the early ages, which is graffiti lessons, art lessons, painting lessons, music lessons. And most of those of those five lessons are dictated by local artists from our community. So the area that we started in just kind of felt like an average street, you know, average part of Camino Trezi. Here you can see obviously the heart of the tourist district. I mean, I knew this was a touristy place. I had no idea. It's literally been transformed into a row of gift shops. To think that this was, you know, one of the most impoverished and gang uh, afflicted parts of Medellin just a couple decades ago. And to see what it's turned into today. This is pretty surreal. Hey, Johan, brother, we had an amazing tour today. Uh, we saw a lot, we learned a lot. For anyone watching who would like to learn even more and experience even more, where can they find you, man? Okay, guys, so this is Johan. Uh, welcome again to Camino 13. You're always welcome. You have to keep in mind uh, I'm an English speaking tour guide, so you can come whenever. You can find me on Instagram like Juan.GiraldoBanegas or Juan.GiraldoBanegas. I'll put that in the description for you guys down below. Right. Thanks so much, brother. No, thank you so much. Yeah. Always welcome, Canada. Always welcome, Dan. Always welcome, Good Canada. Time. And really, yeah, guys, this video, I mean, I've given you an introduction to this place, but there's so much more I haven't included that you just, you feel it when you're here, you know. It's a special place. And now I think the bus is waiting. We're gonna, we're gonna bus back to where it all started. After the tour was done, I wanted to thank our guide for all the great information and for being in the video and everything. So we decided to take him out to dinner. We went to this restaurant in Lorelli's, which is like, you know, muy tipica, very traditional Colombian food. If you want to try a good quality restaurant for Colombian food in Medellin, I highly recommend this place. And so when you ask me what is Medellin, what is the most authentically Medellin? I mean, in some ways, Camino Trece is also a bubble. Like, it's not like you can go to any of the other slums of the city and, and walk around. No, I would not recommend that without a local who really knows what they're doing. But I feel like in some ways, this actually is the most authentically Medellin neighborhood. Because to me, it speaks to the journey that this city is on. It was once a very, very dangerous place. And now it's aiming at you know, something, something much, much safer. And so when you arrive in El Poblado, you might feel like you're in a bubble and you might be like, oh, everything's so safe, even though the whole city isn't. When you go to a local neighborhood like Beilin, you really have to watch out because, you know, they don't get a lot of tourists and it might seem very dangerous. But neither of those tell the whole story. The neighborhood to me that tells the whole story is Camino Trece because it's a place that was dangerous, that is moving in the right direction. A neighborhood that strives to be better. A city that strives to be better. This city is not perfect, but it's on the path to a new future. And it's offering new opportunities to locals. Now, I don't want to sugarcoat it and say like, this is a dream city, everything's perfect in Medellin. I saw a lot of poverty there as well. I saw a lot of homeless people. And it's, it's sad. I, I, hope, I hope that the economy that is developing in that city helps everyone. I hope, I hope that all the beautiful paisas that I met and everyone I didn't meet can have a brighter future. But if that brighter future comes, I think it will come through initiatives like Comunitrese, which 
step by step make this city easier to explore. And it's definitely a city worth visiting or even living in. And in fact, there's a lot of expats who are now moving to Medellin uh, in large part because of the people and the weather and the cost of living. It's an interesting city to consider being based in. It's not perfect, but at the end of the day, nowhere is. And the way I would describe Medellin is like it's, it's beautiful chaos. It's beautiful chaos. And uh, some places the beauty is a bit higher, some places the chaos is a bit higher. You know, it's always a dance between the two. But if you like a big, crazy place full of sights to see and different sides to explore, then Medellin might be for you. So after one month in Medellin, today is my last day here. I came here on my own, but now surrounded by new friends. Sienna, Stephanie, Yolanda. Jacob in the back with the soup. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing about traveling? Or why do you travel? Oh, that's a tough question. Meeting so many great people that inspire you and then you can just grow. You see different cultures and yeah, you just your mind expands and get to know more things. Stephanie, why do you travel? That's actually not so much different to what Yolanda said. So I love to meet new people, new places and new things about myself. And also as a vegan traveler, uh, for me the food is very important and I was very lucky so far to always get like really good food most of the time. <laughs> Well, we're at a great vegan restaurant right now, if anyone ever uh, comes to Medellin. What's the name of this place? Alma Natura. Alma Natura. Yeah. Recommended. Last but not least, Sienna, why do you travel? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have many answers that are very different than them. Obviously, the food is so important. Uh, <laughs> but really, I think a lot of it has to do with how you can learn. Um, because instead of just learning through books, throughout all of our lives, or, or up until leaving university, I guess for me at least, it's just like learning and reading about these places or watching videos, but not experiencing it. And I feel like since I started traveling in the last four years, I've learned so much more than I ever did in school through people, through experience. And I feel like, yeah, meeting these wonderful people like you and these beautiful, magical fairies right here. Um, yeah, who have made my heart feel so full and have taught me so much more about life. And I think that's really what it's about. I feel like travelers, we're a, we're a weird bunch, you know, we're just trying to figure this world out. We're trying to learn things for ourselves. We're trying to directly experience the world around us. And sometimes that comes with costs, you know, sometimes you get your phone stolen. Sometimes your, your beautiful day exploring a city gets, gets rained on. Sometimes you, uh, you make mistakes, but you learn and you grow and In the end, you're a better person for it. You learn about another city. You learn about strangers around you. You learn about yourself. And Medellin is a difficult city in some ways, but it's a place you can learn a lot and you can grow a lot. And you can create memories to last a lifetime. I'm no different than you. I'm just a traveler who started filming my adventures five, six years ago and somehow grew this channel. I'm super grateful for everyone out there who watches. I don't know why you watch, I don't know where you're from, but it warms my heart to know you guys are out there and if you made it to the end, you're, you're, prob you're probably a weirdo just like me. You're one of those people who wants to learn about the world and 
that means you're one of the good ones. Like, we need more people like that out there. Open-minded people who don't just believe the media and all their negative news stories about a place, but those who actually want to experience it for themselves. And I got more places that I'm going to show you, more places to experience from Colombia coming up in the next videos on this channel. I hope you will subscribe and maybe click that bell button and uh, maybe even become a member if you want to click the join button. You can find out ways to uh, support this channel for a few bucks a month. Yeah, but mostly I'm just glad to have you here. You know, as always, I'm Dan from The New Travel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.